Hello everyone. Welcome to this new tutorial showing you how to make the Helix Bridge with Grasshopper. The Helix Bridge is a pedestrian bridge located in Singapore near the Marina Bay Sands. It is designed by local architect A61 collaboration with Cox Architects and engineered by Erot. When I first visited Singapore and saw this bridge, I immediately fell in love with it. I wanted to see if I can use Grasshopper to rebuild it. The concept of the bridge hails from the inspiration of the double helix structure of the DNA. And this project has actually been in the works for a while because I was still deciphering and decoding the design. And as you can see in the screenshot of the final script, uh, this is going to be a lengthy tutorial series. And I will assume that you have basic knowledge of Rhino and Grasshopper. And I think for this tutorial, we only use one add-on, which is Kangaroo 2. But if you notice I'm using a component that you don't have, uh, please let me know. I hope you have learned something new at the end of this tutorial series. Okay, before we start, I have gathered for us a few basic uh, necessary data that we can use in order to kickstart our script. Um, I can go over them one by one. The sources of these data comes from um, online sources such as Wikipedia or just uh, Google, uh, and also from reliable sources such as the website of the architects themselves, A61 and Cox Architect. Uh, so let's go by them one by one. Uh, I have taken a few pictures myself in order to uh, for myself to look at how our certain joints come together, uh, especially the studs, rods, and certain joints and uh, and weldings how they come together. But you can always use your own if you have any, or if you don't have any and you don't want to use my photos, uh, which you are free to use, you can always uh, consult Google Street View. They always have nice sources, nice photos from other people that you can zoom in. I believe they also have uh, 360 view photo, photosphere, that might or might not give you a bit more insight into how the structure is actually built. But that's all up to you. Uh, but first let's look, let's go through each of them. So the total length, which is total length of the bridge, self-explanatory. Diameter outer helix. Uh, what I mean by diameter outer helix is, uh, let's say that these are the outer helix, basically all the ones that are bigger. Um, if you were to draw, if I were to draw a cross section, okay, uh, let's take somewhere there for example. What you get is you have the bridge deck, you have these beams that go across, and the outer helix you will see that you will have six beams, uh, which is then exactly the third point there. And they look like this. So if you were to draw a circle, what you will see is you will have a diameter of 10.8 or a radius of half of that, which is 5.4 meters. And the same actually goes for the smaller helix, which is the inner helix or uh, the minor helix. But with one um, exception is uh, besides that the diameter is smaller, it's actually five tubes and not six. And how they connect in this diagram, the same section view is they always connect here on these two points. And they have two tubes above the deck and one in the bottom that uh, corresponds to the major helix. Now, you may be wondering, if you pick it up already, that if you were to draw these points, you will not get a circle, despite my horrible drawing skills. What you will actually have if you were to draw a nice circle is you will end up something like this whereas this bottom point will fall out um, so 
what I mean by diameter of the inner helix is actually the circle that fits between these um, four points and not this one because if you were to draw that one that would be here but then the bottom side of the bridge would not intersect and if you look at the information on architect website or Wikipedia you will see that the bottom section um, always intersects with at least that's where the minor and the major helices intersect with each other so that is one slight variation where uh, you might want to take notice so if you only look at the top half that one has a diameter of 9.4 okay and uh, let's see what else we have still equidistant of each other the tubes uh what that basically means is that all the tube in the section that we just drew or erased they are evenly spaced from each other the tube diameter is 273 millimeters um which is basically if you were to cut each tube here whether the minor or the of the or the outer helix you will get this diameter of 273 millimeters quite simple and the last three length of the i-beam and deck width and the distance between the i-beam and to explain that better I'm going to take another picture this one uh, it's also a picture I took by the way so I can use this what I mean by that is the distance between uh, the length of the I beam, what I mean by that is actually this beam here, all these beams, if I can draw, all these beams here that you can see here, they have a length of, if you go all the way to the other side, of 9 meters. And the next point, which is the deck width, the deck width is basically any part here onto the other side where you can walk, and that is if you can see it, is smaller, 6 meters. And the last point is the distance between I beams. The distance between I beams, and what I mean by that is actually, if I can take another color, that distance to the next I beam, that is 2.8 meters. Which is helpful because if you look at, that is also where all the helices has the support studs or rods so with that out of the way uh, you can always refer to this to if you need uh, information of it or you can just consult Google Street View or Wikipedia so with that out of the way we can start creating a starting uh, parameters list that we can use and the ones that we want to know is the obviously the 280 because we want to make a curve that is this long so we can say the total bridge length this will dictate our big curve basically um yeah okay so let's start with that let's draw the curve that is that has the length now i have rhino here opened and what I can do is um, we can start drawing a circle and then cut a section, a portion of that circle that is equal to this length. So I guess that is what we're going to do. Uh, okay, let's see. So let's draw a CNR circle uh, with a point that is it really doesn't matter where we put that point so we just construct the point origin fine uh, radius we just need a big radius we can actually use the same radius as here to be honest uh, what I also like to do is because I know we will be using this number quite often so we're gonna plug it into a number component and we are going to oh one thing is very handy If you press Alt while you drag the arrow, you will see it toggles to red. And if you join that to a component that you use, you will see that it takes the name of whatever you've given to the previous component. So 
let me show you the difference between the black and the red arrow. So you can see it it's just numb. So that's a neat little way for you to copy, quickly copy the name instead of going here, copy, paste, copy, paste. It uh, could save you a few seconds. But it's neat to know. Um, what I usually do is I have that and then to keep the script clean, we're going to be using strictly from here. So any component that we're going to be using, if you're going to use another one, just make copies of it. And that's a practice we can use. And the reason for that is then I can go in here and say hidden wire, which for a big script, it helps a lot to keep it clean and readable. Okay, with that out of the way, let's do, uh, I just want a very big radius, so I can just plug that in here. And what I can do is, I can actually dissect this, let me see, can I shatter this based on, mm, how long is this curve actually? 800, oh yeah, of course. So what we can do with this is we have the length of this. Um, to extract the section that's equal to the length, what we can do is shatter between zero and the length that we want. And one neat little way we can do that, uh, we can also type it in, zero, and then combine it with that, or, uh, See. Ah, we can use a series that sorts from zero with a stepping size of 280 and I just want two numbers. What this gives me is two numbers, which is exactly the ones that I want to shatter my curve. I can hide that actually. Okay. And the next step we can do is to just select the first item because now we have two shatters and then so we started at zero that one will be the one that we want the other one's going to be the other half of the circle so that's not the one that you want to use okay um let's test this by plugging in this curve length and i expect 280 there we go so we can be sure that's Correct. And the same thing we're going to do here. We're going to have a component that we can easily copy paste to other section of our curve. So we can actually do this here. And because we didn't name this, it makes no sense to alt copy this. We can just name this our, uh, let's see, main, uh, main, uh, main curve like that. And then anything that comes from main curve will be copied from this component and so forth. Okay, uh, we set up a main curve, which is that one. So here's going to be where our bridge is going to be built. Um, let me see, what else can we do? We can start uh, defining the sections of the beam. Oh wait, no, actually let's continue making uh, the sliders that we can use for our beam. So for example, we have a 10.8 outer helix diameter and we can call this outer helix diameter and copy paste that we can have the inner one, which is 9.4. We actually do this in the uh, in panels instead of sliders, because then we won't accidentally slide it and regret, <laughs> because the script will then recalculate. Depends on how far you are within the script, so uh, up to you. But these are just a bit more smaller, a bit more manageable. I can actually use this instead. But I'll keep that because that's quite important. The length, you don't want to change that as often. Up to you. All up to you. Uh, one important thing on this is actually, uh, let's not make it at that. 
the 2.8. Now 2.8 is the distance between the I beams, and that will dictate how many sections we will have in our in our base starting curve. So I'm gonna call this um, section width because distance between I beams can be a bit. I mean, it's, it is what it is, but call it something that makes sense to you, basically. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to do the same thing. We're going to say numbers, uh, drag it, alt, there we have it, drag it, alt, and drag it, alt, there we go. And we will be working from these onwards to make our scripts. Uh, as clean as possible and as readable as possible. So with this in mind, we can do is start dividing our curve, our main curve, into sections that we can use. Um, let me see what we can do. Let's start off because we need that. Let's do it like this. And you will be hidden, so it's a bit easier. The other one is section of the I-beam. Oh yeah, I forgot. We should probably do it like that. In this case, it makes me wonder, maybe I should do this instead, so that I can easily copy and paste and take this away. Okay. Uh, what else do we need? We have section width, we have that. Uh, of course, we have the total width. Uh, wait. Okay, that works exactly what we wanted to. Okay. Um, with these two, what we can do is we can make the section out of it using uh, division. Because, oh, not that division. Division by number. Because total width length divided by the section width gives us the number. And this number will dictate how many sections we'll have. So we can use perpendicular frames for this. Uh, actually, maybe not perpendicular frames because that one uses a curve. Uh, wait, which one did I select? This one. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter which one we use. Okay, let's use this one since it's clearer. So what we have here is our curve divided into sections. And we can use these section to make the circles that will ultimately define our inner and outer helices. Uh, okay, I think this is a good point to stop this video here and pick this up in the next video. So to recap, what we've done is we have um, gathered the information that we will need to build the rest of the script. We have uh, talked about the policies of how we're going to be using parameters that's going to be reused, mainly the main one, so it helps keep our script clean. Uh, also do practice naming some of these components to make it easier for yourself to understand. And we also make the first division of our curve that is represent that will represent the total length of our bridge in the end. And we've divided that into the number of section that is according to what we've seen. So in the next video we're gonna be tackling we're gonna pick this up and we will draw um, all the circles or actually we're going to be starting to draw the I-beams themselves first and whether we move on to the circles uh, remains to be seen how long that tutorial is going to be. So with that said, uh, I'll see you in the next one.